Welcome to the Bland Altman method comparison tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use Analyze It to assess the agreement between two methods of measurement using Bland and Altman difference plots and limits of agreement. First, let's look at plotting the relationship between methods. Now, when assessing the agreement between two methods, it's useful to plot the difference between methods against the mean of the methods, a difference plot. A difference plot is effectively a scatter plot rotated 45 degrees clockwise. However, a difference plot is more informative than a scatter plot since the data points are not tightly clustered around the diagonal. A difference plot also clearly shows any relationship between the differences and the magnitude of measurement. To illustrate this concept, we're going to use an example from Bland and Altman's 1986 paper. This example compares two methods of measuring peak expiratory flow rate or PEFR. On each of 17 subjects, two measurements were taken with a right meter and two with a mini right meter. To create the difference plot, first up we're going to open the file called PEFR.xlsx. Now we'll click a cell in the data set and next on the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Statistical Analyses group, click Method Comparison and then click Difference Plot. As you can see, the analysis task pane appears to the right of the data set. In the X variable drop down list, select Right Meter. And now in the Y variable drop down list, we're going to select Mini Right Meter. Select the first replicate option. As in Bland and Altman's paper, only the first measurement by each method is used to illustrate the difference plot and limits of agreement. Both measurements are used in the study of repeatability. Finally, here we're going to click Calculate. Now the results are calculated and the analysis report is displayed. The points on the difference plot roughly form a constant width horizontal band across the measuring interval and there is no obvious relationship between the difference and the mean or the variability of the measurements and the mean. Estimating the agreement. Now if the differences are not related to magnitude, the mean of the differences provides an estimate of the average bias between the methods. The limits of agreement estimate the interval that a given proportion of differences between measurements is likely to lie within. The limits can be used to determine if the methods can be used interchangeably or if a new method can replace an old method without changing the interpretation of the results. To estimate the limits of agreement, first up on the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Method Comparison group, click Estimate Agreement Limits. The Fit Differences task is added to the analysis task pane. Provided the differences are normally distributed, the default settings are suitable for analysing methods with constant bias and variability. Next, click Recalculate. So the results are recalculated and the analysis report is updated. The mean difference estimate is 2.1, which indicates that the mini right meter reads on average 2.1 litres per minute higher than the right meter. A hypothesis test could be used to determine if this is significantly different from zero. If it is, adjusting readings from the mini right meter by subtracting 2.1 will make them agree more closely with the right meter. The limits of agreement estimate an interval of minus 73.9 to 78.1, which indicates that the mini right meter may measure as much as 73.9 litres per minute below and 78.1 litres per minute above the large meter. This would be unacceptable for clinical purposes. The confidence intervals for the mean difference and limits of agreement indicate the uncertainty in the estimates. The wide intervals are due to the small sample size and large variation of the differences. Even the most optimistic interpretation will conclude that the agreement is unacceptable. Next, let's look at understanding the importance of repeatability. Repeatability, or variation in repeated measurements on the same subject under identical conditions over a short period of time, is important because it directly affects the agreement between methods. To assess repeatability, 
two or more measurements by each method on each subject must be made. If one method has poor repeatability, the agreement between the two methods will also be poor. If both methods have poor repeatability, the agreement will be even worse. When comparing agreement with an old method with poor repeatability, even a perfect new method will not agree with it. So let's take a look at how to plot the repeatability of each method. First, on the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Method comparison group, we'll click Repeatability. And next, click Recalculate. The results are recalculated and there we see the analysis report is updated. The repeatability plots show the standard deviation, SD, of the measurements for each subject and method. Larger values indicate poor agreement between replicate measurements. Based on the plots, the repeatability of both methods is similar and the SD is not related to the magnitude of the measurement. The coefficient of repeatability is 42.4 for the right meter and 55.2 for the mini right meter. Therefore, 95% of differences between repeated measurements made with the right meter are expected to be with 42.4 liters per minute and similarly 55.2 litres per minute for the mini right metre. Using repeated measurements. Now when repeated measurements, replicates, are made for each subject, it is inefficient to estimate average bias and limits of agreement using only the first measurement, rather than all measurements. If replicates are available, it's sensible to use the mean of the replicates to estimate average bias. However, when estimating the limits of agreement, the reduction in the standard deviation due to averaging of the measurements must be considered and adjusted for if necessary. So, to estimate the limits of agreement. First, on the Analysis Task pane, select the Mean of Replicates option. Now, on the Fit Differences Task pane, in the Difference Between drop-down list, we'll select Single measurements. The limits of agreement will be estimated for the difference between single measurements by each method. This is standard practice when reporting patient results for PEFR. The mean measurements option uses the mean of the replicates to compute the limits of agreement. However, this is going to lead to narrower limits of agreement due to the reduction in standard deviation I mentioned earlier. And so it should only be used when it is standard practice to use the mean of multiple measurements as the patient result. Finally, here we're going to click Recalculate. And here we go. The results are recalculated and the analysis report can be seen there, all updated. Now, the mean difference estimate is 6.0, which indicates that the mini right meter reads on average 6.0 litres per minute higher than the right meter. The confidence interval is narrower because the measurement error was reduced by using the mean of the replicates. The limits of agreement estimate an interval of minus 67.8 to 79.8, which indicates that the mini right meter may measure as much as 67.8 litres per minute below and 79.8 litres per minute above the large meter. This would be unacceptable for clinical purposes. Again, the confidence intervals are narrower due to the use of more measurements. So let's take a look at dealing with a relationship between difference and magnitude of measurement. The difference plot may sometimes suggest a relationship between the differences and magnitude of measurement. Often the band of points on the difference plot will start narrow and then widen to the right of the plot as magnitude increases. This indicates that the variability of the differences increases with magnitude of measurement. Sometimes the band of points may not be horizontal, which indicates a relationship between average difference and the magnitude. To illustrate these concepts, we're going to use an example from Bland and Altman's 1999 paper. This example measures plasma volume expressed as a percentage of normal using two alternative sets of normal values from Nadler and Hurley. So, to create the difference plot with limits of agreement. First, open the file called plasma.xlsx. Then we click a cell in the dataset. And on the 
Analyze It ribbon tab in the Statistical Analyses group, click Method Comparison and then click Bland Altman. So the analysis task pane appears to the right of the data set. And next on the model drop down list, we click matched pairs to indicate the layout of the data. In the Y variable drop down list, select plasma volume. Next in the item variable drop down list, select subject. Then in the method variable drop down list, we're going to select method. And finally click calculate. The results are calculated and the analysis report here can be seen. Now the difference plot shows an obvious systematic difference between the methods as all the differences are above the line of equality, zero. There is also a clear relationship between the difference and the mean with the difference increasing as plasma volume rises. The limits of agreement appear rather wide at low values and too narrow at higher values. Transforming the measurements to remove a relationship between differences and magnitude. When the differences are related to magnitude, it is best to try to eliminate the relationship using a transformation. Because it has a clear interpretation, logarithmic transformation is often used to remove the effect of differences increasing with magnitude. The difference between the logarithms of two values is equivalent to the ratios of the two values. Other transformations such as square root or reciprocal cannot be clearly interpreted and are best avoided. However, rather than use a logarithmic transformation, it is usually easier to use the ratio of the measurements or the difference expressed as a percentage of the mean. To transform the differences, on the Fit Differences task pane in the D drop down list, we select Ratio and then quite simply we click Recalculate. And sure enough, the results are recalculated and the analysis report updated. The difference plot shows the ratio of the measurements with the points now forming a constant width band across the measuring interval. The mean ratio estimate is 1.10, which indicates that the Nadler method measures an average of 10% higher than the Hurley method. The limits of agreement indicate that the Nadler method may measure between 6% to 15% above the Hurley method for 95% of measurements. Next, let's take a look at estimating regression-based limits of agreement when transformation isn't enough. Sometimes a transformation doesn't solve the problem of a relationship between the differences and magnitude. For example, this could occur when differences are negative for low values and positive for high values. To illustrate these concepts, we're going to use another example from Bland and Altman's 1999 paper. In this example, the fat content of human milk was measured by enzymic procedures for the determination of triglycerides and using the standard Gerber method. To estimate the regression-based limits of agreement, first open the file called fat Dot xlsx. So the analysis report on the FAT worksheet shows that the differences are related to the magnitude, although the variability looks fairly constant throughout the measuring interval. Next, on the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Report group, click Edit, and here we can see the analysis task pane appearing to the right of the report. So we go back to the Analyze It ribbon tab, and in the Method Comparison group, click Estimate Agreement Limits. And you can see the Fit Differences task is now added to the Analysis Task pane. And now we go to the Mean Function drop-down list and select Linear, and finally click Recalculate. And the results are recalculated, and here the analysis report is updated. The difference plot shows the average bias estimated using linear regression. The limits of agreement are estimated using the residual standard deviation from the regression. The p-value of the slope term is significant. p is less than 0.05 and confirms that the average difference is related to the magnitude. If we suspect that the variability of the differences is also related to the mean, we can model the SD using the residuals from the fit. 
And now to estimating non-parametric limits of agreement for non-normally distributed data. An assumption of the Bland-Altman limits of agreement is that the differences, or residuals when fitting a regression, are normally distributed. In many cases, there will not be a big impact on the limits of agreement when the distribution of the differences is not normal. However, there may be cases where it is preferable to estimate the limits using a non-parametric method. A histogram of the differences is useful for assessing the assumption of normality. If the distribution is skewed or has very long tails, the assumption of normality may not be valid. To illustrate these concepts, we're going to use another example from Bland and Altman's 1999 paper. This example shows the differences in systolic blood pressure measurements by device and those by sphygmon manometer. To estimate the non-parametric limits of agreement, first open the file called sbp.xlsx. The analysis report on the SBP worksheet shows that the differences are fairly constant but contain a few large discrepancies. So on the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Report group, click Edit. And to the right of the report, we can see our analysis task pane. Next, on the Fit Differences task pane in the LOA Estimator drop down list, select Percentiles and then click recalculate. The results are recalculated and the analysis report is updated. The difference plot shows the limits of agreement estimated using the 2.5 and the 97.5 percentiles and the average bias estimated as the median of the differences. The limits of agreement estimated by the non-parametric method are wider than the limits estimated using the parametric method. Roughly 2.5% of the observations are above with a similar percentage below the limits of agreement. In contrast, the narrower parametric base limits of agreement show all observations outside the lower limits of agreement and none above the upper limit. Thanks for watching this tutorial. To find out more and download a free trial of Analyze It, visit us at analyze-it.com.